We honor you for your presence, and we realize that your presence is fullness of joy. Howard needs to sit down. Holy Spirit, you stand up and speak to our hearts like only you can. I pray for those that are with us in the building and those that are on Facebook Live. God, somewhere, something we say, God, will touch hearts and change lives and bring forth transformation. We don't want church as usual. God, we need a, a touch from you. So Holy Spirit, do it on today. Take us to a deeper level in you, and we'll trust you. We give you all honor and praise in Jesus' name. Come on, saints, in Jesus' name. One more time for the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's look at this. Let's look at this. Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 through 6. We want to look at how God sees children. How many know children are an important part of the family of God? Amen? Hallelujah. And you'll find these words. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him. And set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now that's powerful in itself. He says in order to make it into heaven, you got to come as a child. Let's keep reading. Whosoever, therefore, now when you see a whosoever, you know God's getting ready to drop something heavy because then he follows up with a therefore. And when it's a therefore, you got to look at what it's. Therefore. therefore. Therefore shall humble himself as this little child. The same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whosoever shall receive one such little child in my name receives me. Now this is always amazing because it's always hard to find people to work in children's ministry and he says the greatest in the kingdom are what? The children. And if you want to be great, you got to come as a what? Child. Isn't that ironic? You people say, I don't do children. I don't do children. Well, <laughs> do you do Jesus? <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost. Amen? You know what? I didn't do public speaking before God called me. Are you with me? I did my own shy world. That's what I enjoy. But God calls you out of your bubble so that you can, guess what? Go where he wants you to go. But it goes on to say, but whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depths of the sea. Matthew 18, verses 1 through 6. Now the Bible says in John that you shall know the truth, right? And the truth for what? Set you free. And so as our job here as, as pastors, as leaders, as become church, we present the truth to you. Now, the transformation occurs when we receive the truth. Now, I can't make you receive the truth. Amen. So I want you to say, so I say, Lord, I, I'm open. And if you're at home, say this with me. Lord, I'm open to receive the truth. Amen. See, that's what brings transformation. Not just hearing it. Hearing it with an open heart and allowing it to change you. Amen. We're talking about the whole era of children today. Amen. So let's look at this. The greatest in this kingdom are those who are changed from an adult attitude to have the character of a little child. What do you mean? The innocence, the openness, the teachability of a little child. Are y'all with me? And anyone who harms or offends one of his little children, whether an actual child or a believer with a childlike character, is in serious trouble. That's why when you're doing right, you don't have to worry about somebody doing you wrong. God will always look out for you. Amen? God always will look out for you. Those who receive a little children in his name are receiving him. Heaven is going to be full of people whose character is childlike. Let me say it again. Heaven is going to be filled with people whose character are childlike. The disciples tried to send away the little children who were brought to Jesus, and they thought the master was too busy with important things to take time 
for such small children. See, I want to encourage you. That's why, you know, we passed, uh, you know, at, at some points when we first started, I worked with the kids and Pastor T, we would switch off working with the kids because we understand that the church, the children are not the leaders of tomorrow. I want you to get this out of your mind. because Children are future. No, children are the leaders today. Why don't parents take time with their children? Because they don't see them as the leaders of today. Are you with me? And what you don't, what you don't take care of today will give you hell tomorrow. Let me say that again. What you won't take care of today will give you hell tomorrow. Amen? What am I saying? God has put these precious children in your viewpoint. And a lot of times we'll put our work. We'll put people, we'll put things in front of our kids. Not understanding God's given you this time to invest in your children. And you only get one time to do it. Amen? Billy Graham, one of the biggest things he said, he, he didn't have many regrets, but he wished he had spent more time with his children. He said his wife did most of it because he was traveling. If he could do anything different about his life, he said he wouldn't want to change anything but spending time with his children. Let me tell you something. I have one that my ages, my ages, my children are from 14 to 21, soon to be 21. And I know this, the time went so, so fast. I remember when they were in diapers, I was like, I can't wait for them to get out of diapers. And that, well, we had two, but you know, we had four, so it'd be two out of diapers, and then you can pull ups. Then we got in pull ups, and they said, oh, I can't wait till them get out of diapers. And I remember when they all got out of diapers. I remember we couldn't wait till one get 12 because that's the legal age where they can babysit the others. Couldn't wait. I used to have friends, we used to have friends, neighbors that would be like, okay, I'm gone. I said, where are you going? He said, oh, oh, my, oh, my son's babysitting, the, oh, my daughter's babysitting the rest of the kids. We're like, wow, we can't do that. Because they're too young. Are you with me? Then I remember when they grew out of the age of where kids eat free. You know, 12 and under is kids eat free. Because we used to hit every restaurant. I was telling some of the parents about people. You say, how do y'all eat out so much? We had all the restaurants lined up. And because our kids were in sports and very active, we had it lined up. So we knew Buffalo's was on Tuesday. We knew IHOP was on Wednesday. We knew, so each day we were going out to eat no more than $10 to $15 for the whole family. Because the kids ate free. And the waitresses knew my kids. Are you with me? Because she says, your children really do eat. Because we taught them to eat everything on their plate. Even if they didn't like it, they ate it. So it wasn't like, oh, we don't want it. But like, your kids, they'd be like, they clean the plate. Are you with me? But you grow out of that stage. Then I remember the time now they, when they began to carry their own wallets and we had to st teach them stewardship after they turned 12. So they got paid a certain amount of money. So when they went out, they had to pay for their meals and they still pay for their meals. And so we're in that phase. Each phase, you can't go back. You can't reverse the phase. So what am I saying? Enjoy the phase that you're in. It'll be gone before you know it. Amen? Some of you remember in the beginning, and I'm just going to reiterate for some of you that weren't here, when we started nine years ago, I used to coach track, and I used to coach basketball, and I loved, one thing I loved about Become Church, you worked with me, because I told you early on, my family is first. So sometimes we would have to maneuver the sermon at the beginning of the service, at nine o'clock or at 10 o'clock, so I could go and coach on the soccer field, or coach on the football field, or coach on the basketball court, and be there for my family. Because the Bible says, I am not supposed to be running the church if my family is not in order. And I tell you, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? And part of my soul is my family. And I think when more clergy realize that, guess what? We'll start working on our families. Amen? It doesn't matter if I get applause up here if the, if the kids aren't applauding me when I come home. Are you with me? The greatest applause I want to get is at the home. Did you hear me? I want them to be happy to see daddy's home. I want to see them do the daddy dance when they were little. Da daddy's home. Daddy, are you with me? That's 
important to me. Amen? Let's keep going. Luke's account calls them infant. Okay, the disciples tried to send away the little children who were brought to Jesus. They thought that the master was too busy, important, to, important things to take time for such small children. Luke's account calls them infants, Luke 18, 15 through 17. But Jesus made a point to bless them and remind the adults that children are important to his kingdom. So I want you to understand that we, one of the first things that we invest in is in our children. We believe in the importance of that. That's why we take the time for them to get on stage and come up here and present. And even though I, it was amazing to see them go through the stages of stumbling and getting stronger and then now going to different kids functions and seeing them uh, uh, speaking on stage. and like, yes, it started at Become. Are you with me? This is the training ground to get people ready for the world. Amen. And if you can't get up in front of a loving church family, then who can you get in front of? Amen? So I just want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. Even uh, challenging your, your kids to get out of their comfort zone and to step out. Amen? Let's keep going. Mark 10, verses 13 through 16. Can you turn there, please? Mark 10. And if you can highlight this in your Bibles. Are y'all getting something out of this? I hope so. As the, and they brought young children to him that he should touch them. And his disciples, so the people were bringing their children. How many know your children need a touch from God? That's what transforms them. Studies show that if, you, if, if a child commits to the Lord under the age of 16, they have a 95% chance of staying born again believers. Are you with me? It shows that they get saved after 16, they have only like a 10 to 15% chance of staying believers. It starts when they're young, teaching them that they need to have that touch from God. And they brought the young children to him that he should touch them. And his disciples, oh boy, the, the, his so-called disciples rebuked those that brought them. They corrected him. Why are you doing this? But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms and put his hands upon them and blessed them. Amen. I want to encourage you, and I'm just, it's not in my notes, but spontaneously. If you don't have the patience to work with kids, have the patience that if you see something that's good for the children's ministry, you're out. If it's a snack, say, let me buy this for the kids. Let me sew into it. If you're good at making copies and organizing and you have access where you can make copies, let me say, say let me find out from the, uh, the church if they need curriculum copied. What am I saying? Find out how you can sew in our, into our leaders. And I won't say future, into our leaders. Find out how you can sew in the children's ministry. Amen. To me, it's the most valuable ministry in the church. Amen? Is our children. Because they are valuable to us. Hallelujah. Let's keep going. The early church obviously understood the lessons Jesus had taught about the value of children. When Paul wrote to Timothy giving him instructions for the church at Ephesus, he spoke of the importance of saints taking care of their families and providing for their needs. That's 1 Timothy 5 and 8. He says, but if any provide not for his own and specifically for those of his own house, he have denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. I mean, no, God's called you to take care of yours. Yeah. Amen. And even if they're not in your house and they're yours, God's called you to take care of it. I don't understand men and women when they have children, they don't want to take care of their kids. you got to take care of your kids. Amen? Amen? This is especially important for church leaders. One that, and I understand, let me tell you something, I understand it can be overwhelming. I have four kids. I, I was like, Lord, how are we going to do? I remember all four of them were playing sports. I remember when they went to high school and sports went from being $100 to $500 and $1,000 per child. And at the time, we were planning this church, and I knew before when I was in real estate, it was nothing for me just to get that. $1,000 was nothing to me. But we weren't even getting $1,000 in the offering. Sometimes it was $300, $500. <laughs> I'm like, Lord, how are we going to do this? And God, every time, made a way out of nowhere. 
I talked to him. I asked him. And he came through every single time. God has no respect to person. He has a respect to faith. God respects faith. All you have to do is trust God. Ask him. He loves, get this now, he loves blowing our minds. He loves showing us that he can do abundantly above what we can ask or think. He loves showing us how small we are and how big he is. Amen? And I love it when he does it too. Amen? Because it's like, boom, it doesn't have to be all on me. Amen? I take on the burden that I'm going to do it. I'm going to trust it and make it happen. But God, you move. You move. This is especially important for church leaders. One that it says in 1 Timothy 3, 4, and 5, and I, and, I, and I sort of refer to this. One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to make, how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? 1 Timothy 3, verses 4 through 5. So that's not just my opinion. That's, that's how it's supposed to be. And that was so important to me, becoming a pastor. One of the reasons at first when God called me that I ran away from my call. Because I didn't understand that I could do it biblically. What do you mean, Pastor? As a, as a youth missionary, I would go to churches and see the worst kids in the church. Can you finish the statement? The worst kids in the church were the what? Were the pastor's kids. And I was like, Lord, why are you going to call me to this? Don't you love me? And then the Holy Spirit was showing me as I answered the call, yes, guess what? It's not my fault that they're the worst kids. Somewhere those parents abdicated their responsibility to those children. And so the key is that you keep your fam, keep me first and your family in line next. And many of you that started out with us, remember nine years ago, sometimes how we would, they were little and they would be on the front row or one of them would be acting up. I say, excuse me, stop the message, take their little hand, take them to the bathroom, to do what I had to do, whether it was a talk or whether it was some correction. And we come out, march ourselves out. But they sit on the front. They weren't sitting in the back. They sat on the front row. And then I kept on preaching. And I really didn't care if you had a problem with it. Why? Because that's my family. Are you with me? And they know that I will love them and I will reward them. And guess what? I will discipline them, which is this one is rewards and punishment because I love them. Amen? Amen. That was never a question to them because God's called me to keep my family in order. Does that make sense? How can I tell you how to run your, run the, teach you on family if, if my family's not in order? Are you with me? Yes. Had to teach my boys, don't talk back to your mom. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. My, my, your mom is an extension of me. So if you sassing her, you're sassing me. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't the type of dad, that, oh, you, you do it. Hey, just don't sass me, but you can do it. No, no, we did, we're one. So I overheard. She said, oh, no, they're fine. No, I don't like their tone. How me know what I'm talking about, tone? Yeah. Now, I don't like your tone. I, 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 you won, you one dial away from, from getting it. You, well, they stress. You, 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 you eight years old. What you stressed about? <laughs> you don't got no bills. You don't, no, 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 no. Life going to come. You're going to have stress. Are you with me? Because yeah. teenage years, then I'll give you a little more grace. Because then you got some academics that you got to be stressed about. But right now, you don't got nothing, right? See Jane run? No, you ain't stressed. <laughs> Are you with me? You ain't stressed. So you got to get an attitude adjustment. Amen? Amen? Why? What we don't take care in the present, what? Will punish us in the future. You take care of it now. I used, my wife, I used to tell this all the time. I says, honey, you're going to be the, look, I'm six foot two. You're going to be the smallest thing in the house. If we don't take care of it while they're like this, guess what? You'll be scared for me to leave them alone with you. And I'm not having that. Are you with me? I have no fears now. I can leave and know that they're straight and they're taking care of their mom. They're respecting her. They're not raising their voice to her. She calls them the first time they're answering. Why? Because we took care of it when they were young. Are y'all with me? 
I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Amen? Let's keep going. Y'all getting something out of this? How, how does God see children? Look, whole children are what? A gift of the Lord. Psalms 127 verses 3 through 5. The fruit of the womb is a what? Reward. Now let me tell you something. Your children are not just a tax deduction. Come on. We think that's the only gift it is. Are you with me? Some of you may have households where you're not even getting a tax deduction. You say, it ain't fair. But your reward is from heaven. Did you hear me? Your reward is from heaven. If you're able to be in that child's life, your reward is from heaven. Let you hey, you get the awards down here. I'll get the reward. Man gives awards. God gives rewards. Oh, some of you single parents, you're doing it all. Guess what? You're going to get the reward. Are you with me? You may not get all the photoshops and pictures, but when, it's, when, when you're going to get the rewards from heaven. Amen? If that, if that parent is not active in that child's life, he said, well, I wish he gets some of the rewards too, Pastor. Well, no. Right now, God is strengthening you to do what you're doing as God is working on that other parent. Amen? Yeah. Trust God. Sometimes I really believe God moves some other parents out for a season so that those kids won't be contaminated. Come take care of your kids. If I got to make you take care of your kids, something wrong. Are y'all with me? Sometimes got to move them out. So when they're strong enough, the kids can be around me and they won't be changed by that mess. Are y'all with me? Do you understand what I'm saying? I hope so. Amen. So children are inheritance of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward like an arrows in the hand of a warrior. So are the children of one's youth. How blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be ashamed when they speak with their enemies in the gate. Psalms 127. Children are priceless treasure, a heritage or an inheritance from the Lord. He does not take lightly anyone who harm one of these precious gifts. He does not approve of parents who do not properly love and nurture their children together as a family. Mark 10 and 22 through 12, 1 Timothy 5 and 8. His disapproval includes anyone who does not take time to minister to them. That word minister means to serve them spiritually. Matthew 19 and 13 through 15. Mark 10 through 13 and 16. Luke 18, 15 through 17. One thing we do in our house, we have a family day. I want to encourage you, get a family time in your house where you go and you go over, not only do you do fun things, but you go over one spiritual with them. I want to encourage you to do that. You should, that your, your family should not just be getting fed when they come to the house of God. They should be getting fed by their parents spiritually and naturally at home. Does that make sense? Yeah. Amen. And so what happens is when they come in, this is not new to them. And they start calling you a hypocrite because what they do is they see you, you come here and you start changing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And they heard you acting a fool around the house. Are you with me? They, when, when tough things happen, they don't see you. So come on, let's pray. I never asked. I remember I was talking to you. I said, how many seen your parents pray? And I thought everybody's going to raise their hand. And No, they don't do that. They complain. I can, what, I say, come on, how about over, di, over, 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 over the meal? Say, oh, yeah, yeah, over the meal. We see them over the meal. Are you with me? No, that can't be our only testimony. They got to see when they're struggling their homework. Come on, let's pray about it. Are you with me? Yes, talk to the teacher, do all that stuff. But sometimes we go straight to the natural. And sometimes it's something I know with my, <laughs> I remember my mom was raising me because I wasn't always truthful as a kid. And sometimes I exaggerate the situation and made it seem like everybody was against me. And I'll never forget my mom when I would tell her about the situation, she'd be like, let's pray. I'm like, oh, no. Nah. And somehow out of prayer, she's like, you know what? I don't need to call that teacher. I think you need to work a little bit harder. Are you with me? Because the Holy Spirit would show. I don't want to pray because I don't want the Holy Spirit. He would show her stuff. Parents, I'm letting you know, the Holy Spirit wants to show you some things in that place of prayer. And he'll show you your children's weakness. And he'll show you your children's strength. He'll show you how you, who you need to respond to and how you need to respond to them. So that it won't be just an emotional response. Does that make sense? Man, my time is going by so quickly. Amen? 
So if you love your children, dare to discipline. Everybody say dare to discipline. Dare to, discipline. to steward God's investment in your children. Let's say that together again. Dare to discipline to steward God's investment in your children. Again, discipline is not just punishing. Are you with me? It's rewards and punishment. Have incentives for your kids. Just don't tell them what they can't do if you don't tell them what they can do. Amen? Reward them. I, again, when my kids were young, we went, went to Toys R Us. They're going out of business now. But we bought, we, first we made charts. But as they got older, like seven and eight, we wanted to learn how to do chores around the house. At the time, we had uh, maids coming in. I was doing very well, so we had different ones. But I, I wanted them to learn how to do their own tasks and not wait for the maid to come make up the bed and do the things like that. So we bought charts, and they got incentives, uh, little points on their magnet board Whenever they made up their bed, whenever they took out the trash, whenever they, and at the end of the week, those points equaled money. Each one was 10, first to start out 10 cent. Then as they got older, it became 25 cent. Then it became 50 cent. Are you with me? And at the end of the week, we would see who had the most points. And then we would give them the, the, the exchange so they saw their labor each equal the blessing. And then we would take them to the dollar store or some fun store and they would get to spend their blessing or save it. Amen. A lot of times they want to put it in the bank. They didn't want to spend it. They want to spend my money, but not theirs. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And I was all right with that. Amen. Hallelujah. So you want to steward that. So you want to have reward for good things. And I say, if you didn't have a temper tantrum all day, especially when they're going twos and threes, we had a chart there. We would chart. OK, you know, you're 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 in the green. You have a tantrum. You're in the yellow. Okay, you're going in the red. Okay, you're going to bed early in the red. Are you with me? Reward is setting, taking the time to set your house up in order so that when they go into school, they're not getting disciplined for the first time and looking at them crazy. No, you can't do this. What? My mom let me do everything. Are you with me? Let's keep going. Wisdom for children used to be passed down from prior generations to the next. Do we agree with that? You know what I mean? It used to be that we had a community. Now our neighborhoods are so transient. So in the midst, you could talk to other parents and other grandparents. And you, the grandparents lived down the street. And you could say, hey, I'm having a problem with this. What did you do, Grandma? And they would tell you what they used to do. Now you have grandmas that are now 30, 40. Are you with me? You remember when grandmas used to be old? Am I the only one? Okay, y'all don't want, amen, like Bob. Are, are you with me? And I'm not saying, I'm just, it's a change. The family structure has broken down. And the enemy has attacked the family. That's what we're talking about, kingdom family. So we can get back to how God wants so the blessings of God could be on our family, amen? Many of us would adopt the cuckoo clock discipline. And I got this from James Dobson. Talk about basically that parent, and you can see this sometimes even in public where parents do this. It's like, but, but say they're at home, instead of having some boundaries and some order in the home, it's basically the parent, every time they do something wrong, they may come out every hour. Hey! Stop that! Tired of this foolishness! Stop it! Then they go back, just like a clock, boom, 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 and do whatever they're doing in their room. Hour go by again. Hey, did I tell you to stop that? Get your hands off your brother. Get your hands off your sister. Cuckoo clock. But you the cuckoo. Are you with me? <laughs> not setting up boundaries. Not setting up order. Not setting up discipline. Not setting up expectations. When you go into the store, give me a perfect example. When you go into the store, you have, or, or you'll see these kids in the store, you know. <laughs> now I'm not talking about two and three. I can understand two and three year olds having a temper tantrum. I'm talking about five, six, I was in Target. I was a kid, nine years, ah, I said, stop it. I mean, I, I, before I knew it. Because uh -huh. uh -huh. the mom was Johnny, what do you want? Johnny, what? did I tell you, did I tell you, didn't tell you? I mean, she said it at least 10 times. And she was driving, the kid was driving everybody crazy. <laughs> People were moving away to other lines. I was like, I am not moving. Stop it. Kids looked up. He stopped, got near his mom, and he said, thank you. 
Are you with me? But she could have said it. She wasn't taking authority. So God had to raise me up outside of the home to do what she should have been doing. Are y'all with me? Yes. Set those boundaries. Say, I'm not going to be the cuckoo. <laughs> Are you with me? Just being clocked. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Coming out. Oh, ah, stop this. Oh, you're driving me crazy. Oh. Not setting the boundaries. When you get ready to go in the store, you let your kids know, okay, these are what, this is what I'm expecting of you. When we go in here, these are going to be the rewards. If you do this, is this this reward? If you do this, is that, that, that reward? Hey, when somebody speaks to you, I'm expecting you to talk to them. That's what you got to do for teenagers. I know for mine, I had to set rewards for teenagers. Are you with me? Because, you know, they get in that headset, all mindsets. Okay, you talk. Guess what? I got their rewards for you. You don't talk, and somebody has to ask you two and three times to talk, then guess what? There's going to be penalties for you because you're representing me. Are you with me? You know? But if we don't lay out, if we don't train them and expect things out of them, then they won't rise up to the expectation. Am I making sense? Yeah. Amen. Thank, I got one. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Latoya. Thank y'all. Amen. I need that. We must lead with confidence and discipline. And your kids want you to lead, and you got to lead with love. Are you with me? You do it not because you're trying to be mean to your kids, because you love your kids. And in the whole era of spanking, we can get to, we're going to get to that as we get move on. on. I know Oprah says, don't spank your kids. She don't have one child. All she got is pets. Dogs, I think. Four dogs. Are you with me? So we're in this, this, this Oprah generation, this feel-good generation. And you know, what I hurt my children. Yeah. Yeah, what I spank. I don't spank to hurt my children. Let me tell you something. If you take care of your children when they're young, I haven't had to give a spanking in years. Because I took care of it when they were little. Are you with me? How he got 15, got muscles and everything. I ain't going to try to be spanking him at 15. Hurt myself. Ain't going to be wrestling him. Come on. Tell my wife all the time, I said, I'm handling it while he's 8, 9, and 10. Are you with me? Because I ain't going to be wrestling no man in my house. Come on. Now, I'm going to win, but I don't have time for that. <laughs> my dad didn't wrestle with me. He gave me a look. And I'm, you see my dad, five foot nine. I never tried my dad. Now, I don't understand something. For, I never tried my mom either. I don't understand this. Mm-hmm. I don't understand it with kids. Try. Somewhere that parent's not doing something right. Mm-hmm. Hear me now. It's not the kid. They laid it down for me. My mom, five foot four. Never tried. My dad would go out of town for weeks to two weeks at a time. Never tried her. Never raised my hand. Never cussed. Never, never tried her. Because you put the fear of God in me. Some of me go out a month at a time with the state. Didn't try her. Missed my dad. Didn't, did not try her. Are you with me? Because I understood she would get with me. In a, in a New York minute. Amen? Amen? Understood that. She loved the Lord. And I understand being sassing. I remember she, my sister, one of my sons, I won't expose which one, say, say I said, you, you, you roll those eyes, I swallow them. We weren't allowed to roll our eyes. We couldn't do all that. But she took care of it. Again, she did, got, took care of it when we were 9, 10, 11, 12. So when we were 15, 16, 17, that wasn't even a. That was a foregone conclusion. I remember, I had not shared this, I remember my tone was wrong with my dad. And I got punished for that. Because my tone, he asked me to take out the trash, and he didn't like the tone that I answered him. Now, I didn't know what that was. I just started screaming for mama, because I was about to get punished. I said, well, like, what you want me to say? How you want me to say it? He's <laughs> like, I didn't like your tone. I was like, okay, my tone, okay. But I need to take the bass out of my phone. Hey. Okay. 
Amen. I came out all right. Amen. Now let's look at this. We're talking about having boundaries versus none. We got two mountaintops up here and two streets. Which one would you rather ride on? The one without no boundaries? Nope. You said they sat the left side. Yep, I know that's right. Are you with me? How many like riding in the mountains? I, it's a couple you said I hate right. Right. But I, when, we went to, when we went to Puerto Rico and the rural parts, it, it was like this. And they were flying. And it was one lane. And they would play like chicken. I'm like, how y'all know to stop? Whoever stops. They're like, what? <laughs> and you could see down the side of the mountain. And I was just praying in tongues the whole time. I went in tongues. And you, and you were with us, right? You were, you were in high school. I said, oh my God, I ain't going to die up in Puerto Rico. And they were just calm. He was talking to me while he, I was like, stop talking. Just drive. Oh, we go up here all the time. And, and, it, was, and it was dirt road. So you're jumping. Like, we feel like we're going to hop down the mountain. I'm like, oh, my God. Your yeah, mission trip will get you saved real quick. I got right with God every day, every hour. But the boundaries, now Notice. The boundaries is in, a safety, is in the safety part. It's not in the danger zone. Are you with me? You put boundaries in the safe zones. You don't wait till they get out of the safe zone. Am I making sense? See, discipline is not done to a child but for a child. Let me say it again. Discipline, and I'm, gonna, I'm wrapping it up. Are you getting something out of this? It's so much more I want to get to. I want, oh, so much more I want to get to. Discipline is not done to a child, but for a child. Guardrail for life, for the mountains of, guardrail for the mountains of life. But there must be clear boundaries. Your children should know what you will take and what you won't take. See, when I'm talking about the boundaries and my tone and all that, my parents laid out to me what they expected out of me and what they would not tolerate. Are you with me? When my, you know, when my mom said, here's the thing is, my mom was like, you going to get it when your dad get home? You know what that meant? Not only was I going to get it from her, because we didn't wait to get a spanking when my dad got home. She was going to spank us. And then when dad got home, there was another spanking coming. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? And his was, you know, we could run around with my mom. My dad was, touch your toe, stand still, don't look back, or you're getting another one. Mm -hmm. That's how my dad was. Are you with me? He was military. No, we ain't going to be playing this running around and you trying to explain. Don't start explaining what you were doing. Don't explain what your mom did wrong. You better just touch your toes and look down. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Now, see, that would be child abuse now to some people. But it kept me right. Never was in prison. Never was in jail, amen? Cause we had the jailhouse at home, amen? And the warden was Pop Sanders, amen? <laughs> there must be clear boundaries. Loving discipline can seem like a cage for a child, but it's there to protect them. It's there to protect them. Illustration I have coming up next. Because the lack of perspective See, it seems like, it seems like it's uh, a cage because it's the lack of perspective they see, where they can't see the big picture. Amen? I'm wrapping it up. Right here, we have a picture of some of our pets. At one time, we had a rat called Bugsy, and he was our male rabbit. He was our breeder rabbit. And we had a, a, a Manchester Terror mixed with rat terror, which hunts rabbits. <laughs> and so we had to keep the rabbit in a cage for his protection because Samson would look like look at him and this is Samson when he was younger and say man that's a good meal are you with me the cage was for his protection and even with Samson we had him on a leash at times because we wanted to train him he when he was younger he could be in the house and some of you that knew us when we were younger he had his chair in his house people like how'd he go he was very disciplined I'd be like Samson go to his chair he would go get in his chair sit in his chair and we'll stay there and we'll move until I, I told him to move. Are you with me? But that came, we trained him to do that. Amen? And if, with boundaries, with restraints, with rewards, are you with me? We even had a leash for the rabbit. 
who we trained where they could go walk the rabbit in the street. And they trained the rabbit to heal. Guess what? And I, my mom told me this when I first got, when I first, uh, when we first had our pregnant with the first child. She says, now, she had her mama talk with me. She's not in here, good, I can talk about it. She said, now, don't be one of these pastors, don't have, don't have no, uh, I said, my, you ain't had to say that to me. She said, don't be one of these pastors where the kids are all wild. You take care of your children. Don't let everybody take care of your children. You take care of your children first. Because sometimes people say, I'll give it to brother so-and-so and and this brother. No, no, you take care of your children. Are you with me? You discipline your children. You be there for your children so they won't resent the ministry. And I'm like, that's the best piece of advice. But I said, thank you. So it's the same way with, with, with my pet. I had to take time. Now, if I can train pets and they can be trained and my children are so much more smarter and much more intelligent, can't they be trained? That's what I want to say. My mom said, they can send a monkey to the moon so you can train your child to sit still in church. Are you with me? You can train them to stay focused when they're in church. When we were growing up, we had to sit in front of our parents. We weren't allowed to sit behind our parents. All, am I telling the truth, honey? Answered by my sister, I'm looking at because because all the other kids could sit in the back. And my mom, we, dad, we walk in and say, wait, say, say hey to your friends. Now, come on, get in your row in front. You can sit independently, but you sit where we can see you. And before we knew it, all the other parents started doing the same thing. My parents weren't deacons. They just loved the Lord. They were just like, you know, hey, you're going to stay out of trouble. And Pop Sanders, I remember being in the youth choir. We had a loft. I'm going to just end with this story. We had a loft in the, in the, in the youth choir. i never forget. And you could hide behind the wall and talk. And Brother Jamal was, one of, was in my And all, we, we'd be talking back there. used to talk. We used to talk. I mean, they used to talk before I joined because Pop Sanders would pop up in there. If he was in the church and he saw us talking or heard, I don't know how he knew, he would just slip up there. What y'all doing? And he would discipline the other kids and go tell their parents, are you with me? Now, half, you know, I, even now, even in pastoring, I know I've said, I've talked to some people's kids and the, and the parents come back to me, why do you say that to my child? I'm like, okay, wait a minute. Your child was wrong. Your child was cussing this one out. Come on. no. You come to me first. I'm like, what? I'm a grown man. Are you with me? This is, this is no, no, you, you need to go somewhere else. Are, are you with me? Because that's not the type of community that we're trying to raise up and become church. We're trying to raise up a, a, a church that has respect, honor, and love. Amen? And like, Martez, can I use you real quick before you go out? I told you last, last week, I, you had your head on, so slip. I told you to take them out, right? Came to you afterwards, right? In between the service, I said, son, you know I love you, right? I said, I talked to you just like you were my son. If my son put his headphone in, I would tell him to take it out. Because I love you. And I don't want you to miss it. Amen? And to me, that's love. Now, if I just let, amen, if I just let you just keep doing wrong in front of me, that ain't love. Because my parents didn't let me do that. Are you with me? So, amen, with that. You getting something out of this? I'm wrapping it up. We got, we, we'll deal with love and control. We got so many more slides that we got to deal with. Are y'all getting something out of this? And I'm trying to, I, I try to make it a little, uh, I'm trying to give you those of you have middle schoolers, if you have elementary, I'm trying to give, make it cross the, the board where you can get something out of this. We can get biblical principles uh, so that you can apply this to your children and so that, guess what, you will have a pleasant future. Meanwhile, what I want you to do is I want you to pray. And ask God to show you the boundaries you need to have with your children. Okay? The scale that we'll be talking about next week is you need the balance between love and control. Too much nurturing, you raise a bunch of spoiled babies. Too much control, you, you, you raise some fearful kids that don't know how to do anything for themselves. You need the balance. And the Holy Spirit will give you the balance. Amen? He'll show you what type of lines of controls that you need, and what type of uh, levels of love that you need to give, where you may need to be more verbal. You need, how many know you need to tell your children that you love them every day? How many know you need to tell your children that you're proud of them? 
Uh, if, especially if you have, uh, again, I started when they were like um, elementary, you start telling, I am proud, every night, I would tell, I would go into my kids when they were younger and, and, and tell them, I am, daddy is so proud of you. So they, they're never questioning if I had to spank them that day, if we had some, by the end of the day, I let them know, I am proud of you. I believe in you. You are my heroes. And I'm expecting greatness out of you. Are y'all with me? And so one thing, that, that's something that my mom was very good at. My dad a lot of times did the spanking. She would always come back and sneak in there. And I, something I didn't want to hear because I'd be mad. <laughs> I said, I'm proud of you. I'm like, well, you told him on me. But I'm proud. <laughs> Give me a hug. <laughs> Are you with me? And so it's important that you, uh, words, uh, that you confess positive things over your children. And they hear and they, and they see that you really mean it. Are you with me? Stand to your feet, everybody. Stand to your feet, everybody. Father, we just thank you right now for your presence. I thank you for every person under the sound of my voice. If you're here and you said, God, I need a little help, don't be ashamed. Just forget about who's right beside you. Amen. You cannot raise children without the Lord. I was talking to somebody, you, got, you need God. You need to have a prayer life. So you need to ask God to help you. So, Father, we just thank you right now. And, Father, we just pray, God, that if there's anyone in here that does not know you like they should, Father, that they would come to know you in a deeper knowledge of who you are. And, Father, that you would reveal yourself to them. There's somebody on Facebook that doesn't know God live. I pray, God, that you would just meet them right where they are. They may be struggling with their child. They may be struggling with their loved one. I pray for even as Vanetta put the prayer request up for that person that is struggling with their child right now. I pray that you give them wisdom from on high and you would direct them and show them what they need to do, God. People are dealing with real situations, real circumstances, and real struggles. So, Father, I pray that you give them your insight. And Lord, I pray that the parents wouldn't beat themselves up. They wouldn't, God, because there's only one them. But God, I pray that you would undergird them and show them what they can do better. Not in a condemnation state, but God, in a conviction state so they can be better uh, 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 parents in you. God, we surrender everything to you. We surrender our children, our households, everything to you. In Jesus' name. Come on, saints, in Jesus' name. Come on, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Give God some praise.